Hey, what's up? Mr. Myers is here, and I, I pity the fool. I pity the fool. If you haven't seen Rocky, this is in Rocky, uh, Rocky 2. And this is uh, about inference for one sample means. So I'm going to show you how to do a one sample, uh, one sample hypothesis test using a T distribution. And so uh, let's see if this is going to work here. All right. So um, I went online and looked at some chains on eBay, these big old cold cha gold chains. And, and, and Mr. T used to wear these big old cold cha gold chains. And uh, I went online. I found some gold chains. I found their weights. And what I want to do is run a one sample t-test and actually in this first one I'm going to run a one sample t-interval so that I could find the estimate of what the average weight of these gold chains is on eBay or the true average at least on on eBay. So when we whenever we do excuse me whenever we do a one sample t-test we need to make sure we do our hypotheses we need to make sure we we do I'm sorry not yeah we make sure our do our hypotheses and we have some conditions for inference that we have to do all of these are just are discussed in my previous videos on inference for one sample t whether we're using a t-interval or a t-test um, I have other videos but I'll run through these really quickly with you and then I want to show you just in this video how to do these uh, t tests and a t interval in the program called GeoGebra online. So we're going to do some inference. We're going to use a t model, so a t distribution, and a t distribution has uh, degrees of freedom. So we're going to make sure that we have our hypothesis written, and we're going to make sure that we have our conditions. Our conditions for a t model are going to be that they're randomly selected, less than ten percent of the population. Again, I've run through this in other videos. Go check those out. Um, and then the last one, of course, is our near, nearly normal condition. And that basically says that we have to have a unimodal and symmetric distribution if our sample size is less than 30. If it's greater than 30, then we're probably going to use a normal model or we can just use the central limit theorem and that works. So if you're doing this for an AP stats class, make sure that you draw the histogram or you draw a dot plot for that third condition to show that the data that you got in your sample were unimodal and, sub and symmetric. All right, then we'll write our conclusion. So these, again, these are the conditions for the T distribution. You can pause this, write it down, um, and we'll continue. These are some of the formulas that you'll need. Uh, the standard error, S over root N, and the confidence interval, X bar plus or minus the T star, or the, the, the T that aligns with your confidence interval with the degrees of freedom. That's easiest if you use a T table, and then we're going to multiply that by our standard error. And then when we're looking for our T statistic in our hypothesis test, we're going to have X bar minus mu over the standard error. Okay, oops. Let's go on to the next one. Now, here's our question. Mr. T pities a fool whose chains are not at least 325 grams on average. He's, you know, he's 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 definitely about doing statistics. So is there enough evidence that the chains from eBay are not heavy enough and we're definitely in need of Mr. T's pity? So we're going to figure that out and we're going to use GeoGebra to do that. And of course, we're going to do a Mr. T test on this. <laughs> Shh, just, that's just a silly joke here. Okay, so let's, what we're going to do is uh, I need to go back to this slide and I'm going to go to GeoGebra.org. All right, so www.geogebra.org. And we're going to go ahead and hit this little plus here. And we're going to start GeoGebra. All right. So once it starts up, we are going to add a spreadsheet because we, we need to enter in these data. So we're going to go and enter, enter in these data in A. So I'm going to go and enter these data in. And then um, I'll start this up again. All right. So I've entered in my data in my column here, A. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this column and I'm going to click on this little histogram here and that and we're going to do a one variable analysis. So we're, we're looking at one variable, right? Weight of gold chains. So we'll do a one variable analysis and boom, here's our histogram. So our histogram pops up. This little slider here will allow me to change my bin widths. Usually my bin width that gives me is is fine and and here we can tell that in this with this, the bin width the sizes that we have we can tell that that these data are unimodal and symmetric so they pass the third condition 
and I'd want to draw this out on my paper when I'm doing this problem. So uh, if we wanted, we can change it to a box plot. And our box plot, clearly, that shows it's symmetric. It doesn't show us the uh, modality, so we don't know if it's unimodal. So it, it'd be nice if we used a, uh, a histogram or a dot. Well, that's an ugly dot plot. Um, let's use a histogram. It's nicer. All right, so then over here on this side, we have a little um, sigma x here. We're going to go and click that, and that's going to give us some statistics here on the side. So now we have some necessary statistics that we want to look over. We've got n, our mean, our standard deviation, and usually we're going to use s as our standard deviation, not sigma for, for what we're doing here because we're talking about a sample. Um, and then our five-number summary. So that's great. We can use these uh, statistics to calculate our confidence interval and our uh, test. However, this will actually do it for us. Quicker. So if we click on this, where it says statistics, and we scroll down, we see that we have a z-test of a mean, a t-test of a mean, and an, an estimate, and a t-estimate. Now, our n, our n is smaller than 30, so we don't want to use z. We're going to use t, since we have a, we're using a t-test. So if we want to do a t-test, we'd click here, t-test. And we'd say, okay, our null hypothesis is that mu is equal to, what, what, what was our null hypothesis? Mu is equal to what? So we're talking about Mr. T has says it's at least 325. So we're going to go and put 325 in here. And then our alternative hypothesis is that it's not at least 325, and we're going to need Mr. T's pity. All right. So as soon as you click that, you'll notice that down here we have our results. It gives us our p-value of 0.2741, our t-score, our calculated t-statistic, the degrees of freedom, our standard error, our n, and what we had in our sample mean. And now we can make our conclusion based on our p-value. Since the p-value is higher than any known alpha level, well, a basic alpha level of 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis and say, you know what, there is not enough evidence to say that the weight of the gold chains is less than what Mr. T needs for, to do his pity, which is 325, okay? Uh, let's suppose we wanted to know what the estimate or the, uh, the confidence interval would be for the true mean of the weights of the gold chains. So I would go here and I'd say, hey, let me have a T estimate of the mean. Again, we're using a T because we only have 12 in our sample. And our, we can pick our confidence level. Okay, 95% confidence. Here we go. We've got our interval right here, 294 plus or minus 109. Now, it'll do the math for you here and give you your upper and lower limits so you can know what your uh, your confidence interval is, and it'll give you a margin of error. Gives you all that information you need so you can say, look, we're 95% confident that the true weight, the true average weight of a gold chains of the gold chains on eBay is somewhere between 184.2 grams and 403.95 grams. So we can do that also using GeoGebra. So GeoGebra is kind of a nice, a nice tool online for free that we can do some of these, uh, these statistical inferences that we need for this course. Okay. So hope this was uh, educational for you, and we will talk to you later. I pity the fool who doesn't wear big gold chains. See ya.